Hey guys, Bob here, aka Mr. Reef Safe. Who? N Mr. Reef Safe, legendary reefer. N never mind. Today I'm going to show you how I culture phytoplankton. All right, first things first, I'm out here in my garage, partly because my fish tank room is also my wife's office and she's working today. But I also have to do the uh, phytoplankton culture out here in the garage because it's kind of a little bit messy for the house, plus it's always making noise with the bubblers that you have to use. And uh, today I'm going to show you, I've already harvested two. This is, um, this is the batch that I'm getting ready to harvest. It's pretty simple and I'm going to show you what I do to harvest it and get it ready. And then I'm going to show you how I get the bottle ready for the next culture. What I'm simply going to do is take the top off. Now it will drip a bit. I'm going to put that to the side. now. It is suggested that you clean this each time, you use a new hose. I find that um, I can get away with two or three cultures before I have to do that. And I'm going to unplug this as well, if I can find the correct cord. So that way I have that ready. And I have a pitcher. I, I cleaned this pitcher out. Uh, you don't want to use soap and water, and if you do clean it really well, I like to use rubbing alcohol. I clean it pretty good, and then I rinse it really well. And I'm simply going to pour my Fido in there. I'm going to mix because you always get a little bit of settlement at the bottom so you're going to stir it a little bit and uh, I'm going to do that a few times I'm not going to be able to fit the whole thing in this pitcher at one shot but that's okay because I'm going to use some of that culture as well for the next culture and I've got some bottles here so I'm going to fill these things up I should get for each culture I get between four and six bottles, depending on the size of the culture container I use. This one is uh, Phyto Tank, and I can get about four or five bottles out of this one. I like to give right up to the top, and then I have these caps that I'll put on, and of course, I will write the date on them. Now, these are ready to have the labels put on and put in the freezer, or excuse me, the refrigerator, but I'm gonna put them down here for now. I'm not gonna show you that part because that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Put those out of the way. I'm going to get the rest of my culture out of here. I'm gonna let that drip for a minute. And then what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna take the jar and I'm gonna wash it thoroughly before I put the culture back in. I wanna have it clean just to make sure that I don't get a crash culture. Um, so I'm gonna take this. You can see that there is quite a bit left at the bottom. Uh, that stuff, you know, if you want to take that and put it right into your aquarium, you can do that. That's usually what I do. I put a little bit of water in there, I swish, swish it around, and then I dump it right into my aquarium. And that just makes that it's not a waste. Uh, typically, I would not put this in a jar. Uh, I don't know what that would do, if anything, but I'm not going to take that risk. So I'm going to wash this and I'll be right back. I'm back. I have washed the jar, but just because I've washed it doesn't mean that it's clean. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol and I am going to pour a little bit in and I'm going to use that to swish around and I'm going to use a clean rag and get that rubbing alcohol on it and I'm going to rub down the sides. And the reason you do this is that any germs that are in there, uh, can crash the culture. So I want to make sure that I'm doing this uh, thoroughly and getting as much of that as I can to minimize as much risk of a culture crash as I can. Now, the, if you buy this particular system, it comes with bags to put inside of it. Um, I find the bags to be a little bit of a pain in the neck, so I don't use the bags. Now, I've just used rubbing alcohol on this, and I can either let it dry for a few hours, or I can go take clean water, which I like to take RODI water and rinse it out thoroughly until I can't smell any rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna go do that now. All right, so my jar has been sterilized with the rubbing alcohol, rinsed out really well with RODI water, and then I'd like to take about a cup of salt water and pour in there, uh, the salt water I have ready for uh, water changes, and I like to pour that in there and swish it around a little bit and then dump that out. Do you need to do that? No. Am I gonna stop doing it? No. It's just a step that, I, that makes me feel better when I do it. Uh, you can hear the thunderstorm going on right now. We live in Florida, and that is typical for this time of year. Uh, so I'm gonna take my culture, and I'm gonna pour it in. Now, 
I'm going to pour it to about where you see this black level. This is where the lights are on this particular system. Uh, that's probably a little bit more than I need, but I like to have a little bit darker of a culture. Now, just so it's easier to see for you all on camera, I'm going to plug that back in so you can see that where the level is and how green it is. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my part A and part B fertilizer, shake them pretty good. And then I'm going to take, I don't think it matters what order you put them in, it's just a part A, part B. I know that there are some uh, fertilizers you can get that is just a one part. This particular one is a two part and I, I don't think it matters one way or another. This just happens to be what I have. And uh, I'm going to put in approximately two milliliters of each. Kind of gauge it roughly this says two milliliters i don't know how accurate this is but the, the idea is to be pretty uh, consistent with the amount that you're putting in and I, I think this is just fine so i'm going to put those to the side and then the next thing i have to do is add salt water into this and unfortunately i've got to go off camera again to do that but i'll be back in a minute i got my salt water in here and this culture is a little bit darker than the other ones uh probably i just put a little bit more into this one but i have extra i'm going to pour it into the others just to make them a little bit darker again not that it really matters you're going to get a phyto culture as long as you follow these steps and you make sure that the culture doesn't crash um, now i'm going to put the lid back on Uh, there's a line here that you're supposed to fill it up to, uh, which is what I've done. The one I've made myself, the homemade one right here, I just fill it up a little bit further and uh, it seems to work just great for me. I have a different type of light on that, just a cheapo light that I picked up at a local pet store. I believe it was a used light for like 20 bucks and uh, it's uh, simply just an LED light. You can probably get them on Amazon, it's by Coral Life. And I just put that next to it and it does a great job. It's a really cheap way of doing it. This system here with these two bottles and everything that comes with it is about $200, $230 if I remember correctly. Sorry for the thunder, it's, it is Florida again. Uh, it's that time of year. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my two air pumps and I'm gonna plug them back in because you wanna make sure that the water is kind of bubbling. Um, I like to have it churning like this. Uh, that might be a little too high, it might be a little too low, I don't know. It seems to work for me, I get a good culture from it. Um, and I think it works really well. But uh, that's, that's what I do to get my cultures ready. And you can see this one is not nearly as dark, but I'm gonna take the lid off. I've got a little bit of room. This one I can fill up a little bit more. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of more of my culture in there and make that a little bit darker. Uh, it's hard to tell. It might be a little bit darker than this now. It's hard to tell. But uh, I'll go about seven to 10 days and this will be a nice thick dark color and I'll be able to do this all over again. Um, phyto phytoplankton is really useful for the reef aquarium. Uh, some of the things that I've been reading about phytoplankton is it helps lower phosphates and nitrates. It will outcompete um, other algaes like hair algae. Uh, and it's also really good for the corals. Um, it's debatable whether or not the corals will directly eat the phytoplankton. I've read things where it says that it does. I've read things where it says it doesn't. But there are other things in the aquarium that do eat phytoplankton, like copepods. They will eat the phytoplankton, and the corals will eat them, so they will get the benefit of it. Um, something I want to do a little bit more reading on. But since I've been using this, I've been doing this for about five or six weeks now, I have anecdotally noticed a difference in my aquarium. It looks better. I've also been testing my aquarium parameters, both nitrates and phosphates, and they have come down to what I believe are good levels. My, my nitrates have always been pretty good between, you know, uh, anywhere between eight to 12. They're, they're hovering right about seven now. And my phosphates were as high as uh, 0.15 at one point, and now they stay right about 0.5. And you can say, well, it's, you do water changes, you do all these other things. And yes, I do. I do keep up on those things. So anecdotally, I cannot uh, say any, I can't say anything other than anecdotally that this is working. But for me, that's enough. Um, I believe that if you're doing something for your aquarium and you like the results of it and it's not harming anything, enjoy it. 
And that's what I'm doing with this. I wanted to learn how to culture phytoplankton, and I've been doing that. You can see how easy it is, and uh, it's that simple. You don't have to go out and buy it, but you can. And it's a real simple thing to do, and it's beneficial for your aquarium. All the filter feeders in it, the copepods, uh, feather dusters, clams, a lot, uh, supposedly some of the corals will all eat it. And hey, if it, does, if it helps your aquarium in any way, even if it's marginally, I say go ahead and do it. Well, so that'll do it on the phytoplankton video. I hope you found it informative. I hope it's something that if you guys try to do that you will enjoy it as much as I have. And if you have, please reach out to me. You can find me on TikTok. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. And of course, you can find me on YouTube. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment below.